Well, hi everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Now, today is episode five of our examination of Tartaria, the mud flood. And in this episode, Max Ingram is going to tell us the answer to the question that many of my viewers have been asking. Where did all the mud come from? How did it simultaneously hit all the continents at once, continents separated by oceans? Well, according to Max, the answer is simple. It came from liquefaction following earthquakes. And what did the earthquakes come from? 5G cellular phones. The thing is, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, I now question absolutely everything. Everything that I thought I knew about history, about how we got here, and about where we're going, and about how things are really being run. Even with the mud flood, folks, I would suggest the mud flood was done via frequency, done via creating a type of an earthquake scenario. You know, when you have an earthquake, when you're in an earthquake, what happens is the shaking causes the soil beneath you to liquefy, and that's what causes the buildings to drop. I mean, they start shaking because their foundations are unstable because the ground below them has turned to liquid. This is what I felt when I was in Mexico last year. There was a quite a big earthquake in Acapulco when I was there, about 7.2 or something. And I was on the ground floor of the Princess Palace Resort and the entire ground of the hotel felt like we were floating, felt like we were sailing on the ocean because the whole hotel was floating on the liquid soil beneath it. Now, liquefaction is an actual process that occurs in nature during earthquakes. Normally, ground soil is irregular and kind of locked in with, with itself, so it has some stability. But when the earth starts to shake in an earthquake, groundwater seeps in and separates these soil particles and lubricates them so that they tend to slide around each other very easily. And basically, the ground turns to soup. Now, as this demonstration shows, if you have a light object like a pipeline or a storage tank underneath the ground, it will tend to float up. We see this with coffins and graveyards as well. And if you have a heavy object, it'll tend to sink into the soil, much like it's sitting on quicksand or oatmeal. Now, the problem is that these, don't, these buildings don't just settle straight down in perfect order, inundating the first floor of the building. They sink into the ground and they'll cant over to the side or even fall over. The structural damage, as you can see from some of these photographs, can be quite extensive. The buildings are no longer habitable. It's not as though just the adults will drown in this soup while the children float on top and the buildings remain intact, as seems to be the narrative with the mud flood theory. And that's what happens. And if you could liquefy soil in a certain way so that the ground either flowed down from the mountains over the villages or the villages simply sank into the ground, this would be how you could destroy a lot of the population quite quickly. Now, this concept of the 5G system being used to trigger the next mud flood is a good example of a conspiracy theory. Uh, there is, of course, a grain of truth in it. Um, personal computers took off because of the concept of what they called the killer app. Uh, for PCs, it was the spreadsheet, something that was extraordinarily useful for personal and business use and prompted the drive to buy personal computers and install them in our homes and businesses. Now, you can see an example of how this could possibly be abused uh, with the movie Terminator. When Skynet became self-aware, it not only took over defense computers, it took over home computers and business computers and used them to basically, in their integration, to take over the world. Now, cell phones are another good example of this. All of us carry our cell phones with us at all times. Uh, in my particular case, I drive a lot, so I have an application on my cell phone that keeps track of my mileage and logs it for me. This is an essential thing as a small businessman. Uh, the communication aspect is essential. Uh, I have date books. I have programs that I can use to measure gravity. I can do all sorts of things, take pictures and movies with my cell phone. And as a result, we all have one. And you can see that uh, in a case like uh, The Kingsman, uh, a, a movie that I watched a couple of years ago, one of the things is the bad guy had everybody get implants behind their ear 
and these implants were triggered by a signal that was sent out through all of the cell phones. And basically, they became homicidal maniacs as soon as that signal was sent out. Perhaps you could do it by setting up something like a 5G system, by setting up a whole electromagnetic grid, getting everybody dependent on all this technology and making them carry the technology with them everywhere, and then you could just fry them all whenever you want to, flood the whole place by changing the frequency, flood the whole place with mud and let the domestic pets do the rest. The dogs would clean up all the mess on the streets. Could be why we're all encouraged to have dogs as pets in cities, folks. Well, folks, I'd like to introduce you to my personal body disposal units. On the left, we have Gracie, and on the right, we have Molly. They're just waiting to eat my dead body after the cell phone signal is sent out. Evil bastards. I mean, once they run out of food and start running in packs, the dogs would have a field day. You wouldn't even have hardly even any bones lying around the cities left. The dogs would take care of all of that. So that could be a good reason, folks. You know, I see what you mean. Here's Gracie and Molly with Bella and our beagle Milo plotting to take over the world. Now, the way I know that they're doing this is we got home one night and found out they had been eating ammunition. I'm concerned that they're going to fart and blow my ankle off. But looking at all this, I think they are preparing to do it again pretty soon. I really do. I think we are heading for a new reset or whatever you want to call it. But I think they are probably deciding that this population is waking up a little bit too much and that it's time to pull the plug on them. Well, Max, we're just going to have to start calling you the Australian Mark Sargent. You're getting so good at recycling movie themes. The one you just used is the one from The Matrix. But fear not. Mud flood is not really gaining any traction and is no threat to the authority. And I think that is very much on the cards, folks. I would suggest that is why they are rolling this whole 5G system out. Well, Max, thanks to you, now I have to do an episode on the 5G conspiracy. But based on my preliminary reading from sources like the American Cancer Society, etc., there doesn't appear to be any inherent risk in 5G. And also things like, as I mentioned a few times before, Someone I was speaking to, an engineer that I was speaking to a couple of years ago who builds bridges and buildings, and he's always built bridges with a 100-year lifespan, but now he's been instructed that the new bridges they're building only need to be constructed with a 15-year lifespan. An unnamed engineer claims that bridges are being built for 15 years. I find a little incredulous. Uh, first of all, bridges have to last longer than 15 years. It may take five of those 15 years to just build the darn thing. And then you only get a bridge for 10 years. That doesn't make any sense at all. And to suggest that A, this is happening, and B, it's happening because they're getting ready to do a reset is, well, a leap of logic, Max. I think we're heading for another reset, folks. I think they're going to do it again. I think they've done it several times before. And as I said, I think history is very different. When I look at this and I really take in the fact that this architecture exists all around the world, really look at the mud flood and really let the concept of these tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of foundlings being shipped all around the world really sink in. Well, Max, I've got to say that this theory of the Tartarian mud flood is, well, interesting. So let me make sure that I've got everything straight. Now, about 1840, when they introduced the 19th century version of 5G to replace the 18th century version of 4G that, you know, George Washington had on his cell phone, a series of earthquakes in all continents was simultaneously triggered and liquefaction of the soil occurred, causing the buildings to sink straight down one story and bury the bottom layer of the building. All the adults drowned and were eaten by their dogs, but the children apparently floated on top and were sent around the world on the orphan trains, which we have photographs of, to shovel out the mud from these cities, and unfortunately we don't have any photographs of that. And society reset. I think that about sums it up. So, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Hit that little like and subscribe button down there in the lower right corner.
because I don't think you're going to want to miss the rest of this series because, yes, there's more. So next week we will continue Make Tartaria Great and see if we can get to the bottom of this. Mm -hmm.